What's up guys, my name is James Grage and I'm the co-founder of BPI Sports. And today I wanna to have an open conversation about proteins. What type of protein should you take? Should you take a whey protein? Should you take a whey protein blend? Should you take a casein? Should you take an egg protein? Should you take a protein that has a blend of all those things together? There's a lot of confusion out there when it comes to this topic. One scientific study says this, another scientific study says that. Obviously all the different companies out there attach themselves to one study and, and that's how they build their formulas. What I'm gonna tell you is this, and it comes from personal experience. After taking protein powders for over 20 years, I've never taken one type of protein over another and seen a difference as far as how fast I build muscle or the quality of muscle that I build. At the end of the day, the most important thing is that you get a quality source of protein. Now it'd be like me debating with you whether I'm gonna build more muscle with chicken breasts versus lean beef. Now I know people get in that debate as well, but it's silly. At the end of the day, you need high quality proteins. Where does a protein supplement come in? Well, at the end of the day, it's a convenience. It's not a necessity. You don't have to take a protein powder in order to build muscle. That's the truth. A protein supplement is merely a convenience. So when you're eating chicken breast all day or fish or beef, sometimes to get the proper amount of protein, it can become tiring eating that much of those whole foods. So a protein powder becomes a nice alternative. It's something that tastes good and it's convenient. So I just talked about something that's important and that's taste. So why is taste so important? Well, because results don't come overnight. They come from hard work and consistency, doing it over and over, day in and day out. That's where results come from. So if you're gonna be drinking a supplement, then taste is a big factor because you wanna drink something that tastes good because that's gonna help you drink it every single day. If you're drinking a protein powder that tastes terrible, what's the likelihood that you're gonna to wanna to drink that supplement every single day? So taste is a big factor. And that's really what I'm telling you about protein supplements. A lot of it comes down to personal preference. How does it taste? What's the consistency like? What kind of flavors are available? So those are some important factors. So what's the other big factor? Because I'm obviously not advocating just whey over casein versus egg. Well, I'm advocating quality. Quality is the important part. Whatever type of protein that you choose make sure that it's high quality. Now, you guys may or may not have heard about protein spiking. It's been a big thing for the last couple of years. So all protein spiking means is that the way that you measure the protein content and protein is through nitrogen content. That's one way of measuring it. So a lot of unscrupulous companies out there in order to cheat you, the consumer, and to be able to save money and put that money in their pocket, they put cheap amino acids with a high nitrogen content in their supplements to trick the test. So that's what protein spiking or amino spiking is. So when it comes to making sure that you're getting a quality supplement, you need to make sure that it's gone through some sort of quality verification process. Now everybody knows about protein spiking and all the companies out there are gonna talk about it and they're gonna say, we don't protein spike or amino spike our proteins, but you need to see some sort of proof you need to make sure that they're putting their products through some sort of third-party verification. What does third-party mean? Well, that means that I'm not sending my products out for testing. It's sending them to a laboratory who has a verification program where they oversee every step of the way. So that's one part of the process, making sure that the final product, that whatever's on that label is exactly what's inside that bottle. So that's one part of it. That's testing of the final product. Well, another problem that I see in the industry is at the manufacturing level. Now you see all these little tiny manufacturers popping up left and right because protein is so popular now. Everybody's drinking protein, which means everybody wants to sell a protein. So you've got a lot of companies popping up now that'll make 20 bottles for this guy or 100 bottles for that guy and you're seeing all these products sold online. Maybe this guy on YouTube is selling it. Maybe that guy on Instagram is selling one. So you see a lot of proteins in the market right now. Well, how that product is made is just as important as how much protein is in the bottle. So it's a verification process making sure that the product is made meeting good manufacturing processes or practices and that's what GMP is. 
Uh, so if you ever hear about GMP, that's all it talks about is really making sure that the product is made in a facility that uses good manufacturing practices. So that is why we went to Chromadex, which is an independent third party analytical laboratory, one of the most respected names in the industry. And we asked them to put together a verification program that we could run our products through. And so that includes all the ingredients that go into the formula, auditing of our manufacturing practices, how the product is actually made, and then final testing of it. And so that guarantees that you're getting the product or the quality product that you deserve. And it's something that you can see right on the label. You don't have to take my word for it. And that was the most important thing about this program is I didn't want to jump up and down and say, hey, mine is better, trust me. No, I want you to be able to look at the seal on the bottle and know that you're getting the quality you deserve. So when it comes to the quality of protein, just make sure that there's some sort of third party testing involved. And that's what's gonna help you make that decision whether the product that you're buying is that high quality product that you should be getting. So that's the biggest thing that I advocate when it comes to a protein powder is not whether it's a micellar casein or whether it's a whey or a whey isolate, just make sure that you're getting a high quality protein. So now what are the differences in proteins? So for example, what's the difference between ISO-HD versus WHD versus best protein? Well, they're just all varying degrees of filtration that take place. And what happens in that filtration process is that you're taking out fractional amounts of, or of uh, fractional amounts of fats and you're taking out fractional amounts of sugar and lactose. So the biggest difference that you're gonna see is really fractional again the difference between how much fat is in one versus the other and how much sugar is in one versus the other. But if I were to flip this over, it's really fractional. You're talking about what's the difference between getting one gram of sugar versus three grams of sugar in a total serving. And when it comes to your physique, I'm telling you those differences are minute. And trust me, I really am careful about what I put in my body. I really manage my macros, but again, when it comes to taking a serving of protein powder, I'm not gonna notice a difference in my physique. And this is just me being honest with you guys. You're not gonna see a difference in your physique in a serving of protein of one gram of sugar versus three grams of sugar. So for me, it just really comes down to personal taste. I, personal preference on the flavor, on the texture, the consistency. So I take all three of these products. ISO HD is going to be the most pure. That's going to be your whey protein isolates and hydrolysis. Hydrolysis just mean that those protein chains have been broken down. That's why some people call it pre-digested because you've taken a long protein chain and you've broken it down into smaller chains and it just helps your body uh, absorb that quicker. So that's why a lot of people will drink an isolate post-workout, hoping that it's going to help with that uh, post-workout recovery, nutrient timing. But that window post-workout isn't gonna come down to those fractional differences between these proteins right here. All three of these are going to help you just the same when it comes to post-workout recovery. So again, it just really comes down to what kind of product you want, how much money do you wanna pay for it, and really it's just those personal preferences. So I hope this answers some questions. I, I know this isn't the typical answer that you get when it comes to proteins. Usually you hear someone pitching one type versus the, the other, bashing one versus the other. I'm not telling you you have to take our proteins. I'm telling you just make sure that whatever protein that you take, make sure that it's a high quality protein. So that's the big takeaway. Oh, hopefully this helped and uh, next time we'll pick a new topic and I'll see you guys next time.